Welcome to Shading Theory. This course is designed to be both practical and informative. We'll start off by observing the ways in which light affects objects in the real world. And then I'll show you how to take this theoretical knowledge and use it to improve your speed, quality, and confidence as a 3D artist. Let's get things started by taking a look at this scene. Here we have ShaderBot, and he's going to be our test piece of geometry as we apply shaders and we test out various look dev things. So let me show you what I mean. ShaderBot comes in right here. We have the backdrop. Those two get merged. We have our camera right here. And then right underneath that, we have the ShaderBot materials. And this is where the material is assigned currently to ShaderBot. We have this default, and you're welcome to use this or plug in any other shader that you might want to test. But all that lives right there. Here I have a couple of render settings related to shadows and the backdrop. And here's the fun part. Backdrop materials, we have three different options. I have this dark backdrop, which is really cool. We have this 50% gray backdrop right here. And then we have a 70% gray backdrop. That way, as you're testing materials, you can get an idea of how things feel against different uh, illuminated backdrops. And sometimes that matters. Here we have HDRs, and there's about 15 different options to choose from. And so let's say we want to see what ShaderBot looks like in the middle of a snowstorm. We can do that by going to this HDRI Snowy. And look at that, we have a completely different setup going. So you have all sorts of different options there. We also have the HDR controls here for the exposure, the rotation, if you want to have a diffuse or a spec multiplier. All those settings are right there and they reference to HDRs that you select in here. Below that, we also have this key light section. So with this, we can select different key lights. I position them differently. So this says key 45 left, which means 45 degrees to the left. You'll find a, a light that's currently illuminating ShaderBot. If we want to change that, we can say, oh, I don't know, key 45 right and top. And now we have a different lighting setup like that. Of course, we also have controls for those lights right here. So we have the color of the lights. We can change the exposure of that light, all the basic controls in one handy spot. Next up, we also have this rim light section and we have four different options. Right now we don't have any rim light, but we could choose something, say the rim light center. And now we have this center rim light. We can have one angled a little bit more to the right, right here and then another one that's a little bit towards the left-hand side of ShaderBot. So with these different controls, you have all sorts of different lighting scenarios, and this comes in real handy whenever you're trying to see how uh, materials look in different situations. So anyway, throughout the course, you'll see me using this scene file, and this is the main way that I test out the shaders. Without further ado, let's begin by talking about diffuse and specular reflection. You might think you know how this works, but chances are you don't. 